The James Webb Telescope has been in the spotlight ever since it was launched. This is because it is the most powerful telescope ever launched. In July, we got to see the very first full-color images from the telescope, and they were beautiful. The potential that the telescope has is even more than anyone expected. However, before it got to full operation, the telescope endured a couple of hits from meteorites. Even though it was initially said that the telescope had no problems, it turned out that it would have to live for the rest of its life with some damage. But how come it can't be fixed? Hello, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we'll take a look at why the damage to the James Webb Telescope cannot be fixed. But before we continue, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more updates on what's happening in space. And with that, let's first look at the damage that is there. On May 22nd and May 24th, the James Webb Telescope was struck by a micrometeoroid. The impact was so powerful that it actually left one of the observatory's 18 hexagonal golden mirrors with some damage. At first, the damage was said to be very minimal, and it could be corrected. However, after further investigation, it was discovered that it was actually worse than they thought. In June, NASA disclosed the micrometeoroid strike, noting that the debris was larger than that they had previously anticipated when they were carrying out the pre-launch test. Not so long ago, the scientists who were on the mission shared an image that emphasized how severe the damage was. That was in a report released on July 12th describing what the scientists behind the mission learned using the observatory for the first six months it had been in space. Even though the damage was pretty severe, the overall effect on the telescope was quite small. So the report goes over the research and modeling that engineers are doing to figure out how the micrometeoroids will affect Webb in the long run. Based on the telescope's fuel right now, it's expected to spend at least 20 years just looking into deep space. However, with the damage to the telescope, scientists are no longer sure of the extent of the damage to the operations. This was according to the report's authors. We had previously said that the damage caused to the telescope resulted from a collision with micrometeoroids. But what are they really? Well, micrometeoroids are quite common in space. In fact, they are some of the many dangers in space operations. These are basically smaller pieces of meteoroids that are orbiting the sun at high speed. More often than not, they weigh less than a gram, but because of their high speed, they can cause some serious damage. Facing micrometeoroids is not something new for scientists. After all, the International Space Station and the Hubble Space Telescope are among the long-running programs that are still operational, even though they experience space strikes occasionally. However, the Webb Telescope is at a greater risk, mainly because it's orbiting at Lagrange Point 2 about 1 million miles, 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth. It is said that the engineers behind the Webb telescope first discovered some deformations on the primary mirror while they were in the commissioning period during the alignment phase. This is the phase where they were putting the 18 segments of the hexagonal mirror into the best position for it to capture light. According to the report, the first six strikes were not even close to the pre-launch expectations of the rate, given that they came in at a rate of once per month Furthermore, the resulting deformations are correctable by realigning some of the mirrors. However, it is not the continuous strikes that cause severe damage, but the magnitude at which one of these six strikes struck the telescope. According to the paper, it was this one strike that raised concern, given that it caused a significant blemish to one of the segments, known as C3. The report stated that the strike, which occurred in late May, caused a significant, uncorrectable change in the overall figure of that segment. However, in this case, it turns out that the overall impact on the mission was not that large, given that only a small portion of the telescope area was affected. So far, with the one segment that has been damaged, 17 of the mirror segments remain undamaged. The engineers have found a way to realign Webb's segment to account for most of the damage. The engineers are now unsure of how frequently such events will occur, and with that, they're trying to recalculate and find how often they are likely to occur. The team wrote, It is not yet clear whether the May 2022 hit to segment C3 was a rare event. Rare in this context means that it is possible that they happen to get a high-energy impact that should statistically happen only once every five years. Alternatively, they may be trying to mean that Webb is more susceptible to damage by micrometeoroids than pre-launched modeling predicted. 
Right now, modeling is ongoing as they try to estimate the hazardous population of micrometeoroids and figure out remedies. This may include restricting the pointing direction. One thing they could do is reduce the amount of time that Webb points directly in the direction of its orbit, which according to the team, makes it more likely that more and stronger micrometeoroids will hit it. According to Astronomy Magazine, the main mirror's performance is assessed by how much it deforms starlight. The performance is also measured using something that scientists call the Wavefront Error Root Mean Square, RMS. When Webb was just beginning its mission, the C3 segment, which is the damage segment, had a wavefront error of 56 nanometers, RMS. This was the same for all the other segments. However, with the impact that occurred, the error has now increased to 258 nanometers, RMS. However, thanks to the realignment of the other 17 mirror segments, the error was reduced to about 59 nanometers, RMS. The team said that, for now, Webb's alignment is well within its performance limits since the realigned mirror segments are about 5 to 10 nanometers RMS above the previous best wavefront error RMS values. For now, the engineers are trying to keep an eye on potential future dust-generating events as those in 2023 and 2024. This is when the Webb telescope is expected to fly through the particles that have been left behind by Halley's Comet. NASA's Meteoroid Environment Office at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, is already modeling the impact risk to Webb associated with Haley. Not only that, but NASA officials have also emphasized during the recent media briefings that the micrometeoroid issue has their full attention. Given the damage that the Webb telescope has right now, NASA, along with its collaborative partners, the Canadian Space Agency and the European Space Agency, concluded that the telescope is fully capable of achieving the discoveries for which it was built. Eventually, they expect the telescope to exceed expectations. Webb scientist wrote, Moreover, almost across the board, the science performance of JWST is better than expected. But why is it that they would expect the Webb telescope to overachieve? This is because the James Webb telescope is unlike any other. It has cleaner mirrors than its lofty scientific objectives require. It has a better-than-ever guidance system that locks onto and tracks targets, and its overall performance at clearly viewing objects exceeds requirements. Given that the Webb telescope is at its peak performance, astronomers are now filled with more plans. The first thing that they plan on doing is to look at the stars and galaxies that formed over 13 billion years ago. This was a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. As Gene Crichton, an astronomer and the director of the Manfred Olsen Planetarium at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, told Mashable last year, we're going to see the very stars and galaxy that ever formed. Another thing that the scientists are planning is to look at the cosmos in infrared light, which will allow them to see more of the universe. Infrared is longer wavelengths compared to physical light. This means that light waves can more efficiently slip through the cosmic clouds. Light rarely collides with and gets scattered by these densely packed particles. Ultimately, Webb's infrared eyes can see through places that the legendary Hubble Space Telescope cannot. What do you think of the damage to the James Webb Telescope? Feel free to let us know in the comments section below. Also, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more updates on what's going on in space. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.